What is melatonin? How does it work? And how much should you be taking? Melatonin is a hormone made from serotonin. It's made in the pineal gland in the brain, and it plays a central role in regulating the body's sleep-wake cycle or circadian rhythm. When light hits our eyes in the morning, those light waves get transferred into an area of our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCM for short. The SCM is considered the main clock of our body, and it helps to set off a cascade of events telling our bodies to wake up. One such event is the activation of the hypothalamic pituitary axis, or HPA axis for short. The activation of the HPA axis causes cortisol production. Cortisol is our daytime hormone and works inversely with melatonin. When one is up, the other is down and so on and so forth. Cortisol is highest just after waking, a process called the cortisol awakening response. It then begins to decline until nighttime when it should be at its lowest. That is when melatonin begins to be released. Women seem to have higher melatonin levels than men, but not by much. Interestingly, melatonin appears to be absent in infants and little babies don't seem to develop their own melatonin rhythm until about two to three months of age. It also seems like there's a natural decline in melatonin production as humans age which could lead to sleep issues in adults. Melatonin doesn't just impact our sleep. It's also a powerful antioxidant. It impacts hormones and can have an impact on the menstrual cycle in women. It also seems to play a role in, in neurodegenerative disorders and aging. We also have some research based on what happens to people when their pineal gland is removed and they no longer have that source of melatonin production. It seems to affect the way that they age and can also impact their risk of conditions like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. It's thought that melatonin can actually help prevent the loss of brain cells, which are are called neurons. So you may be thinking, melatonin sounds great. How can I take it? Before you start taking melatonin though, you should be aware of some side effects. Common side effects of melatonin are generally mild, but they can include things like headaches, nausea, dizziness, daytime sleepiness, and really vivid dreams. Less common side effects include gastrointestinal problems like constipation, diarrhea, stomach cramps, mood swings, increased risk of falls and seizures, nightmares, and reduced alertness or confusion. Since melatonin can induce sleep and cause some drowsiness, it shouldn't be taken within five hours of driving, and it definitely shouldn't be taken during the day unless you're directed to do so by your doctor. You don't need to take melatonin though to optimize your body's production of it. Your body makes melatonin naturally from the same ingredients that it uses to make serotonin. Those ingredients are tryptophan, which is an amino acid, and B vitamins. So eating foods that are high in those ingredients will help you make more melatonin. Those foods include things like meats and beans and some whole grains. You can also eat foods that have melatonin in them. There are five ways to produce more melatonin naturally. Those include eating foods like cherries, tart cherries to be exact, goji berries, eggs, milk, fish, and nuts. You can also avoid blue light or bright light at night, which can interrupt your body's natural production of melatonin. You see, there are two enzymes that turn on when your eyes stop perceiving light. Those enzymes convert serotonin into melatonin. They can't do that if your eyes are still perceiving light in your environment. So one of the best ways to produce melatonin naturally at night is to make sure that your environment is dark. This is why you've heard the advice before, probably to make sure you don't have any blue lights in your face before bed. If you can't avoid blue light and you can't avoid light, then wearing blue light blocking glasses is a great way to reduce the amount of blue light that hits your eyes and therefore your pineal gland. Additionally, Getting 15 to 30 minutes of natural light exposure first thing in the morning can help to really amplify your body's cortisol awakening response and therefore decrease melatonin levels during the day so that they're high at night. This just overall helps to regulate your body's circadian rhythm and helps it to produce the most melatonin it naturally can. And finally, bright light in the morning can also help to reset your circadian rhythm. So if you can't get outside in the morning, try some bright light therapy. They make alarm clocks that help use light to wake you up and they also make lights that help to treat seasonal effects order, which you only have to use for a few minutes per day. If you do choose to take a melatonin supplement, you should definitely check with your doctor before doing so. Common recommended doses of melatonin are between half of a milligram and three milligrams. Just because you can find a higher dose in the store doesn't mean you should use it. With melatonin and most things, more does not always mean better. Make sure you check with your functional medicine doctor, dietitian, or other trained healthcare professional about what dose is gonna be right for you. With these five tips, you can maximize your melatonin production, sleep great, and feel great in the morning. If you want more tips like this, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.